Kia ora everyone. This video will be looking at um, analysis, uh, particularly at the features that we need to talk about when doing our analysis of the graph. Uh, we will be looking at the trend, the direction, the strength, uh, the shape of the graph, so whether it's linear or non-linear. We'll be looking at unusual values and grouping, which is clusters. Once again, we will be looking um, using our workbook to help support our learning here and we will be looking at the exemplar I've written looking at Kiwis. So to start with uh, we need to look at the achievement criteria for analysis. So for achieved you have to have a visual inspection to describe the features of the data and talking about it in context. Uh, strength direction, linear, non-linear clusters, unusual values. For merit you need to justify your description and refer to the um, scatter plot, the data and context. And for excellence you need to refer back to your research to support why we're seeing what we're seeing in the data. So first of all, let's look at the first section, um, 4.1, which is trend. This is just a summary statement of the direction strength and whether it's linear or non-linear. It's easier to write this section um, at the end once you've already looked at those three elements. So first of all, we've got the association or the direction. So this is talking about whether it's positive, negative, or whether there's no relationship. We can see here with a positive relationship, if we were to draw a line through the center of it, the line points up. Okay, so this means as this variable increases, so does the other variable. For a negative relationship, correlation just means relationship. Uh, if we put a line through it, it would be pointing downwards. Um, that would mean as... Um, our exploratory variable increases, our response variable decreases. With no relationship, there's not much of a pattern going on, it's really scattered, and when you fit a line to it, it would be pretty flat. Okay? We've then got the strength of data, and strength is about the amount of scatter um, within the data points. So if it's a strong relationship, they form quite a straight line. Okay, if it's a moderate relationship, there's a fair bit of scatter coming around. And for a weak relationship, there's lots of scatter. When we create our graphs and apply a line of best fit to it, the model, um, they give us R values. And the R values um, relate to the strength of the relationship. We will go over these further um, when we talk about making our predictions, uh, but basically a weak relationship would have an R value of 0 0.4, a moderate 0 0.6, and a strong relationship would be greater than 0 0.8. Uh, the next step is looking at the level of scatter and whether it's linear or non-linear. Linear means it forms a straight line. Um, non-linear just means it's curvy. Okay, um, we can see here this one is exponential. Uh, this one here could be a quadratic or a cubic. Um, and that's all you're looking at there for scatter. The next step is looking at unusual values. And these are data points that sit away from the main body of data. Okay, um, when you are identifying them, you want to talk about, um, so this point here, we would expect it to be down here with the line. So you might want to say um, what the change is. So if this one here has a variable up here, um, sorry, a value up here, but we would expect it to be further down. This one here is quite low and we'd expect it to be higher. You talk about why that could be, so when you look at your data, um, you may see a clear reason why. Um, it could be an error and you talk about what you would expect it to be. So this here, um, if we just go through it looking at the examples that they've given, um, and first of all, if we look at the association, whoops, 
the association for the car. So we can see that um, the line is pointing downwards, the data is pointing downwards. So that means there is a negative relationship. So as the weight of a vehicle increases, the fuel efficiency decreases. We can see that the relationship um, looking at the strength of it um, it's it's reasonably strong now this one's talking about our values so if we come into NZ Grapher and I'm going to bring up the cars and a scatter graph and it's looking at the weight and the fuel efficiency in the city okay if I click here for my regression line you'll see up here R is negative 0.8 okay so that's indicating a reasonably strong relationship there's not a lot of scatter in this graph now here they're looking at the scatter and the consistency with it uh, we can see that it's pretty um, consistent for vehicles above a thousand um, kilograms and there's not many vehicles below a thousand kilograms that would be um, because that seems to be the standard weight of your of vehicles um, by the time you bring in their engine um, the chassis etc they're going to have a baseline weight and you would do research to um, look into this in more detail we can also see it's pretty linear um, we've got a few points up the top here that um, don't seem to be fitting the data too well but it's a pretty straight line uh, then if we scroll right down to our unusual values and this is what I was talking about with values and you can kind of tell a bit more when you hover on them so this point here we can see it's a Honda Civic and it's a small vehicle okay so um, it's it's quite light but it's also got um, a really high fuel efficiency um, because it's a small vehicle uh, this one here is a Geo Metro it's also a small vehicle um, and it's quite economical on the um, around the city we would expect that it would be um, getting around 33 um, kilometers per liter when it's actually getting up here at the 45 so it's a lot more economical than than is expected the next section is looking at clusters okay and Clusters is looking at the distrib distribution of the scatter, is it consistent? So with our vehicles, we can see that it's quite consistent from a thousand onwards, um, except for these, these few um, variables, up, the, uh, vehicles up here. Um, the picture I've got here with Old Faithful Eruptions, we've clearly got two groups of um, of clusters there's there's clearly two clusters there's either um, times where the eruption is quite short and then there's ones where the eruption is quite long when we go back to look at an, at look at our Kiwi we can see that there is quite a lot of scatter here okay so it's indicating that there is a weak relationship um, it's positive because we can see that it's pointing upwards and I've explained that the large amount of scatter indicates there's a lot of variation in the weights of kiwi at each height and it could be due to the species um, the gender the age of the kiwi um, I did a bit more researching and found that um, the timing of breeding also plays a role um, on the weight of the kiwi because they can lose up to 30 percent of their body weight when they're in breeding season and different species have different breeding seasons uh, there's also um, access to food and nutrition uh, with some regions uh, having a greater access to food sources than others. Um, I've also identified that there seem to be a few clusters. You can see there's a cluster going on here, there's a cluster going on here, there's a cluster going on here, and there's another cluster here. And I thought it would be quite interesting to explore those clusters. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this back to my Kiwi data. And I am going to look at the height versus the weight. Now, the first thing that I did was I thought, I wonder what's going on with the gender of these, like what's the reason for these clusters? Could it be the gender? Okay, so if you go here to color, you can color it by gender. And instantly I can see the reason for these clusters. It's because we've got gender. Okay, I thought what would happen with location? Okay, so I thought I'd look at location. And I can see that there's quite a lot of variables. It's hard for me to really see what's going on there. So we can also look at species. And that's another interesting one. I've got the uh, brown kiwi and the tokoeka kiwi um, are quite similar heights and weights. And then we've got the great spotted kiwi, which is um, a lot taller than the other birds. Similar weights, but um, they're a lot taller. So I thought that was interesting as well. In my report, um, I've gone on to explain um, the gender differences that I can see and why. Um, and that's because the female has large eggs, so that's why they need to be bigger. And I've also talked about the species. Okay. So for achieved you would just look at the simple graph, looking at the simple relationships and not going a lot further with that. For merit and excellence, you need to be tying it back to your research and um, explaining why you're seeing in context. What I would like you to do is to complete the analysis section for marathon time versus stride length. Okay, so go to the NZ Grapher, create your graph, and just have a play around looking at the species, um, uh, sorry, looking at the colouring, um, colour it by the different variables just to see what's going on, um, and to have a play around. Make sure everything that you do, you record. Okay, so everything you do, you put in your report. So start with your basic, and then start looking at it, looking at the groups, um, are there any um, unusual values? Why are they unusual? Um, link it back to your research. Uh, once again, if you've got any questions, flip me an email or reply uh, on the post. Thank you.